Prince Edward Island's only rowing club is racing against time to be ready for the 2015 season. Rowing PEI's fleet of boats was crushed when the roof collapsed on the barn where their trailer was being stored for the winter. Four of their nine key rowing skulls were destroyed, and the group's new trailer was also damaged in this. Mike Gibson is the president of Rowing PEI, and he joins us now here in the Island Morning Studio for an update. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, Mike. So the last time we talked, you'd not been able to get into the barn to check on the boats. Yes, yeah, we were just able to sort of peek in. The structure wasn't sound, so we couldn't get in to see. But there was obviously a certain amount of damage, and but there were still some boats that we were hoping we'd be able to extract. So tell us what it was like when you actually were able to get in there and assess the damage. We couldn't get in until they actually had to rip the barn apart. So by the time we actually got to see and get in there, you know, they were able to extract things without any further damage. So just the original boats that were crushed were, were lost. And in the extraction process, we were able to, to salvage. Basically, we have two boats that are components of our, of our recreational program that survived. That's about it. We have a couple of lightweight boats that survived, but uh, those are for very few athletes that can use them there. And the, the trailer, too. What was the state of the trailer? The trailer, we had just got the trailer. The trailer was three days old. It's a custom-designed trailer to carry these boats. They're very large, long boats, um, need a special trailer. So we had designed and worked with link letters here in PEI to, to build it and uh, had got our boat safely in the barn, and then the barn collapsed onto the trailer. And uh, the trailer actually protected the boats that were saved, and it, uh, we thought it might be lost because the entire weight of the, the barn was now on it and all the snow. But uh, once they pulled everything off, it seemed pretty good. The, the structure that was holding the boats obviously is going to be repaired, but they were able to drive it back to link mm-hmm. letters, and they're going to repair it. So, so the, the trailer and a couple of the boats, how did that feel for you to at least have, have some salvageable boats in the midst of this? It, it certainly makes... You know, there's something to start with. Um, the realization is that it's pretty hard to offer our services and our, our, our programming with just two boats. It, and then you realize, well, then our whole generation of funds is lost without that ability to run our programming. So, so it, it's it's great, but it certainly still left us with a lot of work to be mm. done. So. so when you start totaling this up with all of the losses, what kinds of dollar figures are you looking at for this club? Well, this is the challenge is that we've been able to, over the years, pick up some used boats. And, and then when you have to go to replace things, things just aren't available. So when you look at new replacement costs, we're looking at, you know, a good... Well, even just the racing quad is in the $20,000 range for that one boat. Um, that's the most expensive. But we're probably looking at a loss of, you know, in the $50,000 range for replacement. But um, we were insured, and the insurance is, is uh, a great step to helping us rebuild. Well, eventually that ice is going to be to melt, and you'll be able to get out there. So where does this leave you for the 2015 season right now as the days are going by? When we ordered the, our boat from Europe, it took almost six months to get it. So that could have been a real challenge for us. We're in the fortunate situation that Quebec, which is the only other jurisdiction that's doing a lot of coastal rowing, happened to have placed an order for boats back in December. And we had talked to them about the possibility of us having some, some boats on that shipment, but unfortunately we didn't have the funds to do it. But they made the decision to fill the container with some additional boats with the hope that they'd, be, they'd sell them once they got to North America. And, um, you know, shipping costs go down per boat as you fill up the container. So it's a, an efficient way to bring boats over. Uh, so as soon as the barn went down, I contacted them to find out what boats were still unaccounted for or, or unpurchased. And there are four boats that we can have. And uh, we've redesigned our scheduling, our programming that would work with these. We're looking to pick up two more coastal doubles and two coastal singles. And with that, with the remaining coastal boats that we have, we could run even an expanded program than what we were able to run last year. So they'll be here in a few weeks. And now it's just a little matter of paying for them and getting them here. <laughs> that, but the big job of getting them from Europe to North America has been taken care of for some, by someone else. And uh, now we just have to coordinate, uh, like I say, paying for them sure. and, and getting them to PEI. And you talked about meeting with the insurance company about this, so mm-hmm. that covers some of it. And uh, you've also launched a, a crowdfunding campaign. Why don't you tell us about that? Yeah. So, um, you know, we, we really want to bring rowing to a broader audience. Rowing 
has a great future, we believe, in PI, it, especially in this coastal style of rowing, which is a very beach-oriented sport. Um, it's a, a great opportunity to do something more than sit at the beach and look at the water. You can actually get out there and enjoy it on, in these boats. So we're hoping to push that, that forward. But like I say, you know, there's lots of incidental fees, the you know, additional storage that we've now had to pay for to keep the boats that we, we were able to salvage the transportation from Quebec to PEI, just lots of little things, uh, insurance deductibles. Mm -hmm. So they're leaving us a little bit short even with the insurance and buying the cheaper version of the boats that, that we're looking at. So, you know, we 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 knew that there was some interest and some support out there, so we thought we'd give people the opportunity to, to help us out if they can. Uh, we'll appreciate every penny. We're, at, we're a volunteer organization. We're a nonprofit sport. So, you know, when you have an extra $1,000 here and an extra $1,000 there, uh, it adds up really mm -hmm. quick and can be quite debilitating for a club. So that's on Indiegogo, and we'll yeah. send out a link to that. Yeah, it's also, you can access that through our website, rowingpei.ca. Uh, the link to that's there as well. Mike, great to talk with you. Thanks so much. Thank you. That is Mike Gibson, president of Rowing PEI. And we have tweeted out the link to the club's Indiegogo campaign. You'll find that on Twitter at Island Morning.